9,999 out of 10,000 of us will not live to 100, directionally speaking. But if we want to live an extra year or five years, what is the most important lesson we can take away from the centenarian that we can actually do something about? I want to start with uh, what you mentioned before, one of my darkest day in research, when Jay Leno in The Tonight Show said, you know, there's those people at Einstein and they said the secret for longevity is don't exercise, don't, uh, <laughs> you know, be obese, don't do. And you know what he said? If you die, you don't care anyhow, right? And and that was the wrong lesson from the centenarian study. If you, <laughs> if you're going to be centenarian, maybe it's not important. By the way, it could be important for centenarians, right? I mean, this woman yep. that I have that smoked for 90 years and died at 110, I just wonder, wouldn't she be the next Madame Clement <laughs> without smoking? Um, so the, the lesson for most of us is still right? E exercise and nutrition, whatever it means to everyone and everything else that you give, right? That's, that's the lesson. And it's not the lesson from centenarians. The lesson from centenarians is that there are uh, longevity genes that could be translated into drugs. And I believe that they could afford uh, years of health span, however we want to define that. Um, and, 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 and that's really what I'm trying to, to say that is a, not an emotional part, but, a, but a, a clinical part. Would you agree with my takeaway from this cohort, which is, because the, the single most important lesson I glean from everything we've said, and, and in addition to lots that we haven't said that you and I have talked about elsewhere or that my own work has you know, pointed me to based on my study of this problem, their superpower is simply delaying the onset of bad things. Like bad things just happen to them 20 to 25 years later. So it's not that they don't get heart attacks. They just don't get them when they're 65. It's not that they don't get cancer. They just don't get it when they're 60. It's not that they don't even get dementia. They just don't get it when they're 75. And when the last time I looked at the distribution of death for centenarians, it was shockingly similar to that of non-centenarians with a couple of differences. They tended to have a little more atherosclerosis, a little more heart attacks, a little less Alzheimer's disease, and I think a little bit more pneumonia. But directionally, they had the same actuarial table of death as people dying in their 80s. It was just a time shift. In fact, I, I, I reviewed the paper from Germany where they looked at the pathology. Okay, it's a pathological. Yeah. They looked at a thousand centenarians that over the years died in their homes. Mm. And they're right, because in the hospitals, we kill them in other ways. Right? Yeah. So died in their homes versus thousand. I'm not sure about the numbers. Of, of other people that died at their homes. And basically the paper was funny because the, the title was like, there's nothing special about the centenarians. They're dying for the same thing. But <laughs> 30 years later, okay, they missed the point. It was like a negative study, but you're <laughs> right. You're right. They're kind of dying from the same thing much later, much later on. So, it's, you, you can look at it about what you said, the resiliency that got them there, the resiliency for anything that attacked them to get them there, or the fact that their aging was slow. <laughs> and so what's the takeaway for us? To me, the takeaway for us as physicians or people who want to have an extra five years of life or 10 years of life, even if we can't have an extra 20, is nothing matters more than prevention of chronic disease. And by the way, you don't get to prevent it once you have your heart attack. Secondary prevention is not prevention. Right. We're, we're talking ultra, ultra, ultra primary prevention. And if health span is something that the medical system hasn't been poised to teach, ultra primary prevention is also something that we haven't really been prepared to teach. <laughs> Thank you.